Howdy YouTube and welcome back to Head Got Shanked plays Hard West. I'm Head Got Shanked and I'm playing Hard West and last time on Head Got Shanked plays Hard West we saw the Undertaker take down a rabble of uh, cultists and a demon and now we're going to see how the Undertaker and Warren's paths your posse would be Jefferson polite. Burns. As a decorated war hero and Indian fighter, you would likely find him in the nearby military encampment. Okay. Of course, you were still a wanted outlaw from your brush with the masked man. Hmm. <laughs> okay, well, great. So, let's see. I seem to have some cards. I've got the Jack of Diamonds, Shadow Salve. Let's see if I've got some other cards. Nope, just the one. Okay. Well, that's going to aid in my defense and give me regeneration. So that's all good stuff. Let's see. I've got a six shooter and a double barrel shotgun. What happened to my bone hand rifle and my uh, awesome gun I had before? I don't know. I guess I was probably careless. How much cash do I have? 120? Oh, good. Okay, the camp was nearly deserted. Only a couple sentries remained. Burns was nowhere to be seen, as an outlaw approaching openly would guarantee a hostile response. You could take the men out by one by one, but it would likely yield less information about where Burns was. Hmm. Let's sneak in and eavesdrop. Sneaking past the guards was simple. You saw a sergeant talking with one. Yeah, it is simple in this game. Stealth is the easiest thing in the world. <laughs> uh... It seems Burns was leading an attack on a nearby Indian village. Hmm. Let's hope to gain more insight. Huh? Apparently Commander Burns was a decorated war hero. With a reputation for risky methods, his most notorious achievement had been to infect himself with smallpox and intentionally be captured by the natives, infecting them in turn. The resulting plague decimated their population, allowing the army to wipe out the survivors without sustaining a single casualty. Burns had survived, his facial scarring a testament to his bloody-mindedness. He thought about ways to use this information to your advantage. Okay. Armed with this knowledge, I was about to retreat from the camp. Straight into a sentryman. You emerged from the resulting gunfight wounded, but victorious. Uh-oh. Okay. Hey! I got myself a musket. That's even better than the bone hand. Or actually, no, that was Alvaro who had the bone hand. I don't even remember what Warren used to have. Um, well, so actually, do I want the six? Let's try this. It's the same amount of heat. Oh, huh. no, wait. Why doesn't my heat rating change? Is it only... Hmm. But I don't know. Hmm. Oh, well. Anyway, I got some dried meat and a healing elixir, so might as well pop those into my inventory, and... I'm a little curious about Matthew's tomb, so let's find out what's going on here. He arrived at a burial place. It was reputed to belong to one of the four evangelists, a gang of four brothers named Mark, Matt, Luke, and John. A tall, red-clad figure sat on the tomb. Oh my gosh, it's Cervantes! He told you that each of the brothers' tombs contained an inscription that told part of their story. If somebody could read the story in correct order, it would reveal the location of the gang's stash. Okay, well, what's your business here, stranger? He said he'd been sent by a mutual acquaintance to help with your perilous endeavor. Cervantes claimed to be good with a gun and have a way with words. His services were at your disposal if you wanted them, but you had to make your choice now. Well, sure. You are looking at Matthew's tomb. Mark was the eldest, and the br others had always followed his orders, but John harbored a secret bitterness. When they finally tracked down the masked doctors responsible for the atrocities, he disobeyed his eldest son, his eldest command to provide cover. Without his brother's protection, Matthew was riddled by bullets. They buried him here. Okay. Alright. Let's go to the massacre site. 
plume of smoke visible from miles away guided you to the site of the pacification. The village was in ruins, littered with body parts. The army had not even spared the women and children. I approach a limp figure who turns out to be Jefferson Burns. Cervantes spat on the remains, saying the coward must have taken his own life to, out of grief over the massacre. You picked up the gun lying by the body and motioned for the Inquisitor to leave. You already had your first companion Next anyway. Next were huh. Randy Harden, a notorious gunfighter, and Henry Persons, a former Pinkerton agent. Ooh. The local crime lord would know where to find them. Well, we got ourselves a navy gun. Let's see what Cervantes has in his... Okay. Somehow he lost his signature guns as well. Uh, alright. I'm pretty okay with that loadout. Let's take a look at our cards. Okay. He's got the Nine of Spades. He has Demonic Strength. I am not sure that I've ever used that. I don't think I've seen that card before. Okay, well. The Wizard. Let's ask the Wizard. <laughs> Did we follow the Yellow Brick Road? <laughs> Dear Wizard... All I want is a posse. <laughs> Warren, you had the posse in you all along. <laughs> okay. Your party came across a circus uh, in the middle of the Badlands. You neared, you saw it was surrounded by armed men wearing clown makeup. You <laughs> previous travels told you this was the Algretto Mystics Gang. Their leader, Wizard Algretto, had a reputation for making things and people disappear without a trace. Um, I'm gonna ask to see the wizard. I'm not interested in the show. Tall, gaunt man introduced himself as Sean Vermillion. He said the wizard was waiting for you and offered you a complimentary drink. A single shot glass filled with a cold yellowish liquid sat on a tray. Oh boy. What could. What consequences could come from this choice, I wonder? Well, I'm in the mood for a drink. Vermillion led you through the dark corridors lined with colorful circus posters. Finally, you passed through a flap door and into complete darkness. You were trying to make out what might be in the dark room when, with a heavy thunk of machinery, a single spotlight appeared. A tall figure stood in it, wearing some sort of cloak. You wanted to walk toward the figure, but your legs didn't react. Uh-oh. A sudden flash of light blinded you, the shock making you fall to the ground. When you opened your eyes, the room was brightly lit. By floating orbs of cold blue light, a short bald man wearing a long robe and strange eyeglasses stood above you. Sean Vermillion stood behind him. A small man presented himself as Wizard Algretto and claimed he had business with you. He told you to nod your head if you wanted a lengthy explanation or shake if you wanted him to cut to the chase. Um. Okay, yeah, I'll hear the long story. The wizard smiled and commended you on your choice to accept the drink. It meant he didn't have to resort to violence to make you listen to him. He said he knew who you were, and who you were looking for, and that you should give up now. The wizard considered Hardin his property, and said the man was currently detained where he belonged. Persons, though, was a different matter. Henry, Henry Howard Persons used to work in the Pinkerton Special Division, but several years of his service were blank. And here's where we tie in with Delir's story. Oh, I thought they'd forgotten. The wizard assured you Persons was quite insane, but that he found the man fascinating, especially his obsessive search for pieces of a specific meteorite. Apparently no law or property or human decency could stop him in his quest to acquire those pieces. He was the ultimate collector. Therefore, the wizard continued, if you wanted to make contact with Persons, you needed to find pieces of the meteorite. And you were in luck? When the meteor traveled through Earth's skies, it left a trail of debris in this very area. All you had to do was obtain some of these pieces in whatever way you deemed acceptable. Four pieces would be enough to attract the strange man's attention and make him emerge from hiding. And then I'm taken away. Well. Ah, okay, so here's John's tomb, Mark's tomb, and there's Luke's tomb. Okay, so we've got about five minutes left on this, so I'm just going to see if I can get to the bottom of this tomb mystery, and then maybe we'll get to some action next time. 
The only mark of burial on this pile of red sandstone was the heavy inscription plate. Read the inscription. The brothers fell into disarray. Mark blamed John. John blamed Mark. And Luke, who had always broken their peace, was brokered their peace, was powerless to reconcile them. Tempers escalated until John drew on Mark, and another brother fell, this time by the hand of his own kin. Okay. So this comes after Matthew. Okay. Let's see what happens on Mark's tomb. Mark's tomb, okay, I don't care. Read the inscription. The hearse was not carrying the worldly rem remnants of the departed to distant soil. Instead, it contained living human body parts, kept alive in jars by electricity and eldritch balms. Mark was resolute. Whoever did this must pay. John and Matt disagreed. For the first time, the brothers were divided. That probably comes before Matthew. So this must be the first. John drifted alone, rootless and without purpose. Finally, tired of being outgunned and outnumbered, he decided he could not continue. He was on, preparing to take his own miserable life when Luke returned, bent on reconciliation. Oh. He had found some leads on the mass doctors, and the time to strike was now. Oh, this is hard. Okay. I, this is a terribly fragmented story. Okay, I just need to get some refreshers here. So, I have to piece it together by who died when. So Matthew dies, but Mark and John are still alive. Okay. Here, Mark and John and Luke are all still alive. And Matthew's already dead. So this definitely comes after Matthew. Mark then dies. So Mark was still alive in those other two stories, so this came third. Yep. Okay, I think I'm ready. I think it's Matthew, John, Mark, then Luke. Matthew, John, then Mark, and then Luke. Really? Ugh. Okay, so maybe Luke comes first. Because nobody is said nobody said to have died in on Luke's tomb. Wait a second. Who died here? Oh wait. No, no. John died second. Oh, but John was alive in Luke's story. Okay, so Luke has to have come first, right? Luke then Matt, then John, then Mark. Damn it. Okay, maybe it's Matthew, then Luke, then John, then Mark. You gotta be kidding me. What am I missing? All right, well, I guess I'm going to puzzle over this a little bit off camera, and I will see you guys again later. Once again, the name's Head Got Shanked, and the game is Hard West. Thank you for watching, and have a good night.